What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to professionally schedule jobs and tasks in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now for this video today, we're going to rely on an external Python library called schedule, which means that we need to install it. And for that, we're going to open up the command line of our choice and we're going to type pip install schedule. And the basic idea of scheduling is that we have a Python script running all the time. And then we have certain tasks or functions that we want to execute on a regular basis. So for example, every minute, every day, every second, or every four minutes, every uh, four days, or every day at a certain time, or every Wednesday at a certain time. There are a couple of things that we can specify here. And this is done very easily with the package schedule. And in order to use it, once we have it installed, we can just say import schedule. And in addition to that, we're also going to import from date time. This is a core Python module. So we don't need to install anything from date time, we're going to import time, time delta and date time. So time for specifying um, a time, obviously time delta for specifying a time difference and date time for specifying a date and a time uh, as one object. So those are the imports. And now what we're going to do is we're going to define a simple function, let's call it job, and this function will do something. Now, in this case, since the focus is on the scheduling, uh, scheduling itself, this function won't do much, it's going to just print a simple message, like subscribe to neural nine or something. And this function can now be scheduled to be uh, run every five minutes, for example, how do we do that? We go ahead and we say schedule dot every and now we can specify an interval by default, this is one. So if we don't specify anything, this is going to be uh, every one, whatever we specify next. So after this function call, we can specify dot, and we can say seconds, minutes, days, whatever. So if I say second, uh, second is used if you have only one second. So if we do schedule every second, that would be the correct one. If I specify something like every five second, I would have to use seconds, which is the plural. And then with this would mean that scheduling that we're scheduling this task or this function to be run every five seconds. So essentially, if I want to do this now, what I can do is I can say dot do. And you can see that this is structured like an English sentence, schedule every five seconds to do something. Now the grammar might not be correct, but you can see what basically is done here. And all we need to do now is we need to pass the job function as an object. So we don't call it we just pass it as as a uh, as an entity. And in order to then actually perform the scheduling, uh, or the scheduled task, what we need to do is we need to say while true. So this is basically an endless loop. And what we do here is we say schedule dot run underscore pending to basically apply the schedule. And then we can say something like, and for this, we probably need import time. Now let's import it with an alias because we already have time here. So let's import it as TM. I'm just going to say here tm dot sleep for one second. And if I run this now, you can see nothing happens here. And after five seconds, it will print subscribe to neural nine, as you can see here. And then after five seconds, it's going it's going to do it again and again and again. So that's the interval that's the scheduling every five seconds, run this function. That's the basic idea. And of course, we can do that with a bunch of different combinations. We can do every five seconds, we can also just omit the parameter here and also remove the s. This would mean run it every second, you can see here subscribe to neural nines now printed every second. Um, and yeah, this can be done with minutes, of course, I'm not going to show you the results here, because I don't want to just wait minutes or hours with you. But you can do every minute every minutes, you can or every x minutes, you could say so every seven minutes, what's important is again, if you do just one, you don't specify the s. Uh, and if you do multiple, you specify the s. so plural, uh, for if you pass a parameter, that's not one, you use the plural keyword here. Um, and then you can do the same thing also with day, I'm not sure if it goes with no, it doesn't go with months, but it works with weeks. So you can say every two weeks, do something, this script, of course, has to be running all the time. And then basically, it says, Okay, now we have a new day, it's 10 o'clock. So I have to run this. And how would we do something like that, we could do something like every day, and then we can specify. So you can extend this sentence, you can say schedule every day, then I can add something I can say at. And then I can pass here to this at function, a time. So for example, 1030. 
So this would mean schedule every day at 1030 to do this job. Now, right now we have uh, 513 p.m. That's basically 1713 p.m. So if I'm fast enough, I can do 14. And you will see in about 30 seconds, we should be able to see that the job is being executed. So I'm just going to leave this running while I continue to talk. And you can combine the uh, combine these things, you can say schedule every Wednesday, schedule every Friday at whatever time and then it's going to be done every time. So if I leave this script running right now, uh, it's going to trigger now here in a couple of seconds. And then if I keep this running for multiple days, it will do it this every single day uh, at 1714. As you can see here now, uh, it's 514. So we got the message. That's how you do the scheduling here. Um, did I forget to cover anything of the basic uh, or any any basic stuff here? Now, one thing that we can do that's also quite interesting is we can say every minute and we can say at what second. So right now, let's do something like we have 22, 23. Let's do 40. So I can say here 40. Schedule every minute at the second 40 to do the job. And basically what this is doing is every time when we get to 40 every minute when we get to 40 seconds, it's going to execute the task. As you can see, that's the basic idea of that. And then we can also specify limits. So we can say, for example, do something every hour. So every hour. Um, and let's remove this at but I can do here also until I can say every hour until you reach the time, for example, I know 11, 33, 42 or something. Um, so run this every hour until you reach that time, then stop doing it essentially. So until the next time, this is only once. So it's going to repeat this every hour until we reach that time and then it's going to stop. Um, we can also do something else we can do. We can specify here time delta and then hours equals eight. That would basically mean run this all the time for eight hours and then stop. And one thing that's also quite interesting is we can do something like every and then we can say, um, for example, one, every one dot two, and I can specify here five dot seconds do job that would mean uh, generate a random number between one and five random intervals between one and five and then run this command every one to five seconds. So sometimes it's going to be less than five seconds, sometimes it's going to be five seconds. Um, it's going to be random. As you can see, sometimes faster, sometimes slower. That is also something that we can do here. Now we can also take this thing here and assign it to an actual job. So I can say J equals, and then I can get the result of this here. And what I can do is I can just say, um, do this and then either from another threat or based on a condition, I can cancel the job. So let's implement something like a counter counter being zero. And then I can say the counter is being increased every second. And if counter equals 10, I will just say uh, J dot cancel. Or what was it? Yeah, can't no, sorry, schedule dot cancel job J. And this will basically then cancel the job. So it's no longer going to be active. Once we reach this statement here, we will not see this job anymore. Um, now the script is still not going to end. But after 10 seconds, we will definitely not have this job running anymore. And I think we already reached that point here. So the job is canceled. So this is how you can cancel jobs. Uh, what else can we do? We can also do the whole thing in a different way. We can do it instead of doing like this, we can also specify annotations. So I can just go ahead and say here from schedule import, let me just see what the import was exactly. Um, it was import every and import repeat. And those are annotations or one is an annotation, the other one is a keyword. And we can do something like def job and I can say at repeat every and then I can specify here 10 or let's go with five seconds. And then I could omit this one and I could remove also this and this. And the basic idea here is now that this is going to also work in the same way. We don't need to specify the command chain, we can just add the annotation and it's going to be repeated every five seconds. So this is also a possibility here. Um, and 
also we can pass certain parameters. So this is also interesting. Uh, you might want to pass certain things to the function. So for example, I might want to pass a message to the job and I want to say hello, the message is and then I can print the message here as well. Uh, actually, we need to have the colon inside of the string, obviously. And now what I can do here in the annotation is I can just specify that the message is going to be um, subscribe or something. Then when I run this, this is how I can pass parameters using the annotation. And the good thing is I can also specify here, for example, that every two seconds, I want to run this as well, but with a different message. Hey, for example, and then I can have two annotations, the same task being repeated every two seconds with hey, and every five seconds with subscribe. This is also a possibility. And the same thing can also be done in the previous way. So instead of specifying annotations, I can say schedule every two seconds, or let's go with every one second, or every second, like this, uh, do and I can just provide the job function. And I can say that the message is going to be hello, or something. So this also works, we can also pass parameters like this. Um, all right, so that's it for the basics. Let's look at an actual example of something you might want to do with that. Now, you can do countless things with that you can do something like an automated reminder system, you can also build a backup system where you say, Okay, I have the script running all the time. And every 12 hours do a backup of my system or every I don't know, whatever you want to do, you can just automate certain reminders or processes that need to be run every single day, or every single Wednesday or every single hour or something you can do that. Um, and one example of that would be a break reminder. This is now a very simplistic example, you could just say def break <clears throat> reminder. And you can say here, print and maybe you want to add some audio, take a break, you have been working for and then you can say I don't know 30 minutes. And then you could say something like, um, you could say something like if you want to do this with the annotation, repeat, and then every 30 dot minutes, every 30 minutes, you're going to do this task here. Um, or you can also do of course, you can also schedule this at certain points in the day. So you could do something like while true again, and schedule run pending to do it to do it like this. TM, sorry. If you want to do it like this every 30 minutes, or you can say at specific times. So instead of doing it like this, you can also say schedule every day at, I don't know, 10, you want to have a break. So break reminder or something, whatever you want to do with that, you can also have an alarm signal, you can also have a stock market clock that says, okay, every day at 930, I'm going to notify you that the stock market is open, whatever you want to do with that, it's up to you. But you can use this library to very comfortably and easily schedule certain routines. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.